The recent Israel-Gaza war has highlighted the division among African countries on supporting Palestine. Why Nigeria declared uh, full solidarity with Palestine earlier on the, in the war, Kenya, Zambia, Ghana, and the Democratic Republic of Congo are among other African nations that have aligned with uh, Israel's position. The African Union Commission under Musafa Mohammed expressed concern over the violence, blamed the denial of the fundamental rights of the Palestinians, and called on a two-state solution. The dual nature of African strengthening ties with Israel, while also supporting Palestine, is not an unexpected. Why many countries try to keep politics separated from trade relations, one will inevitably bleed, uh, bleed into the other. Experts say that uh, neither their seeming contradiction nor the division within Africa on the issue of surprise or suppressing and points to the recent split between African countries normally born by the mutual suffering of historical colonialism and racism as a reason for the division. The short answer is that Africa's division highlights each government's attempt to compartmentalize their interests and underline some countries strengthening ties with Israel on the one hand. They are deep-rooted ties with uh, the Palestinian movement. On the other hand, the offer of cutting-edge technology, military assistance, and aid from Israel. South Africa is facing increasing internal pressure from its civil society to take a clearer position in favor of Palestine. Much of Africa views uh, the current war as a continuation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict rather than a singular battle. The African Union has been divided over granting Israel observer status to the continue that's the continental body for over a decade. African leaders were divided after the war broke out between Israel and Palestine, with some expressing sympathy for Palestinians facing Israeli occupation and criticism of Hamas terrorism for its uh, surprise rocket attack. Stay with us as we get into the context of the situation the war between israel and gaza it's on your pan-african television Africa media stay with us Africa media le monde c'est nous Hello, thanks for joining us on your Pan-African television. This is Afrik Media. It's an honor to always be with you to highlight some of the issues affecting the continent, if not directly, but indirectly. And today we're looking at why Africa is divided on supporting uh, Palestine. We're looking at the Israel-Gaza war, of course, which is making headline news on several media organs. We be discussing, looking at the historical context and the geopolitical implication as well as uh, some of uh, the outcomes and the role played by the African Union as well as the United States in the ongoing crisis between uh, Israel and Gaza. We have the honor to uh, talk with our guest this day who will join us uh, via Zoom and we are inviting you equally to stay with us on the program as we shall be uh, giving out time for you to equally send in your reactions. If you're watching us, note that you can always uh, send in your reactions. We shall be getting your calls uh, during the program. Uh, for those of you following us on Facebook, leave us your comments. We shall have them right here during the program. And uh, to join us this day, we have Dr. David Matsanga. He's a pol political scientist and international relations expert. Uh, doctor, it's a pleasure having you on today's program, the uh, views on the continent on Africa media. Thanks for joining us, doctor. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you all listeners and those watching us across the, the globe on this show, on this television. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Uh, we shall equally be joined by Elijah Nwoku, who is a researcher with Leeds University. He will be joining us uh, shortly during the program. And let's begin right away with you, Doctor. We're looking at the uh, brief historical context of uh, what we have presently ongoing. Israel Gaza war, which is making headline news. What do you make of what what presentation do you have as regards a historical context? First of all, thank you very much for inviting me on this serious 
international crisis that has engulfed the, the entire Middle East mm -hmm. and the entire world. The attack on 7th of October by Hamas after a relative peace that has been there in the, in the, in, in the Middle East has opened what we could call a, a very, very dangerous Pandora box that is not going to end today or tomorrow unless the world comes together, unless the world comes down the Security Council, the United Nations Security Council comes down, puts its feet down. This could escalate into a huge, huge, huge war that could engulf very many countries, first in the Middle East and now in Africa and the rest of the co continents. So the attack was must be condemned because they have had difficulties. Israel the Israelis and the Palestinians had this difficulty since 1948. But they come, they keep quiet, they go up, peace processes are done until we found a solution of a two states solution where they can exist uh, on, 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 on equal terms and recognize each other. But the attack by Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist group. We must be very honest. Hamas does not represent a nation. Hamas represents a faction of the people of Palestine who decided not to go along with the peace process. And therefore, as a terrorist group, it will be treated as a terrorist group. However much you shout up to heaven, wherever you want to go, Ask Angel Gabriel or ask Prophet Muhammad. Hamas remains a terrorist group, a faction of the Palestinians that does not like peace or to sit down on the table for negotiations. As things are happening, there is another side of the Arab country which are silent, especially Ramara in the West Bank, where uh, 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 Muhammad Abbas is the president of the FATA group of the PLO, which is the Palestinian Authority. And I want to make it very, very clear. African Union does not recognize Hamas. African Union recognizes Palestinian Authority. Let the people know and let anybody Challenge me on this. AU does not recognize Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist group. It cannot be recognized by the African Union heads of state. We can recognize, and we have recognized, given the Af Palestinian Authority, recognized internationally, an observer status in African Union. So when you have a Secretary General of the African Union, a man, a clerk officer, a clerk of the African heads of state called Dr. Muhammad Faki, writing on our behalf, when the war is not between the Palestinian Authority and Israel, it is between Israel and Hamas. Let's get these two points very clear. And that is my line of thinking. My line of reasoning and of thinking is very clear that Hamas is a terrorist group designated as a terrorist group that did not want to sit on table in Oslo Accord and Camp David Accord and other accords. Remember, Hamas has killed people the Arabs themselves, the Palestinians themselves, they broke away and they killed over 500 soldiers of Fatah faction of Yasser Arafat and Muhammad Abbas. So it is not a group that we are dealing with <coughs> that we should go on not realizing. Above all, it is the provocator. It is the one that provoked 
It provoked, it went, it blew the fence to go and kill people. It maimed people in cold blood. So any organization, anybody in the world should first condemn an attack that was done by Hamas. Then we can come to the current attacks. Attacks on both sides that, that follow international law are bad attacks. And I don't recognize, I don't support any violence, whether it is coming from Israel or Hamas or whichever angle it is, or Hezbollah. I support peace, a peaceful coexistence of the people of Palestine and respect for the two nation states of Palestine of Palestine and Israel. That is where we are. Thank you. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you, Doctor. You, you've equally uh, been tweeting regarding this uh, situation, and you are calling on the neutrality of uh, the African Union. Uh, can we know what position the African Union, of course, is playing, uh, the role African Union is playing, and how it is impacting the situation? Are you calling for the neutrality of the African Union? I am calling for the neutrality of African Union Commission, not African Union. Okay. There is a difference here. Yeah, okay. African Union Commission Chairperson, Dr. Musa Faki Mohammed, or Dr. Mohammed Faki Musa of Chad, mm. has taken this organization for granted, thinking that this is his mother's organization thinking that this is a father's organization. He takes decisions without consulting leaders. He is not supposed to tell, to, to, to write a statement saying the, 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 the rights of the Palestinian rights. That was a very bad statement. Mm. Even the UN has not written that way. So who are you to write a statement condemning one side, but you have not condemned the Hamas? He did not condemn Hamas, the attacks of, <coughs> of Hamas on Israelis. We want a union, positive neutrality, to say we condemn all acts of terrorism, whether coming from Israel or the Palestinians of Hamas, that is terrorism. Whatever we talk about, if it is not following international law, it is terrorism against anybody in the world. But you can't come and condemn and be on one side, <coughs> issue a statement. I wish you read the statement of, of, the, of, of the chairperson of African Union, Dr. Musa Faki Muhammad, or Dr. Muhammad Faki Musa, whatever name you change. His statements are shallow. His statements are brutish. His statements are sardonic. They don't deserve any international status. He's putting African Union at crossroads. There are countries in African Union that went, whom, which you have read, they support Israel straight. So how are these countries going to unite when they come to the table with the African Union heads of state? Some countries have taken a neutral ground, which is okay. But there are countries that have said we are supporting Israel. And some countries now, but the chairperson of the African Union should remain neutral as the Secretary General of the African Union. He cannot bring personal feelings, personal, religious, political, and other, and, and, you know, affiliates of his wrong feelings and the right statements as if all of us feel the same. No, we pay for this African Union. Our taxation is done. All countries pay for this African Union to exist. This man has contravened quite a lot. He has contravened all African Union under Article of Rule of of, 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 of of, of procedure, Article 41 of Rules of Procedure of African Union have caught up with Dr. Muhammad Faki. 
because he has violated all of them, all of them. I, I, will, I will tell you and remunerate quite a number of things that have been happening in African Union that you will be shocked as a person who has been paying tax, who pays taxes for African Union to survive, for African Union to be having paying their bills, you pay for them. All of you in Africa, all of us in the diaspora, we send money home. And we are paying for the African Union to do our job. But the Secretary General has become an African president who takes the decisions without consulting us. Look at the decision. For example, taking African Union to G20. How many countries agreed to go to G20? Where is the office of G20? All of us live in the metros. My brother there, Elijah, lives in Canada. If he can tell you that in Canada there is an office, a street called G20 office headquarters, how can you carry G20 in a briefcase and come and lie Africans that we have joined G20? As who? What have you gone there to do? What have you taken there? Who gave you permission? Look at all. I want to shock you and I want to shock fellow Africans that all protocols, Malabo, Abuja, Maputo, Kampala, you can name them, list them here. If I tell you the shock I got, I went to the African Court of Justice. I was trying to file a case somewhere. I was, I, the, the judges called me in Arusha, Tanzania. And I'm telling my friend Elijah to, 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 uh, to, to listen to this one. This one is very interesting for him. The judges sat down with me and told me, eh, David, thank you for coming. David, we want to tell you frankly that out of 30 countries, out of 30 countries that by mouth that said we shall join the African Court of Peoples and Human Rights, only eight, eight countries, Elijah, eight countries, only eight countries, eight countries have accepted, and I can name one of them in West Africa is Burkina Faso. It is signed an agreement. Malawi, Botswana, and another few small countries. Best of all these big superpowers, Nigeria, Ghana, all of them, there is nothing. Nobody has signed declaration under Article 34 of the AU protocol. Now, we have seven judges in Arusha sitting, eating food, relaxing, dancing, gasoline, gasoline, petrol, rent, plus women, of course, and the men, yeah? going to nightclubs, eating our food. Is this the African Union that we want? They told me that we are here earning salary. It is not zero salary, Elijah. This is a salary of $4,000 $4, to $5,000 to $10,000 per month. This is the salary that each judge is taking home plus allowances per month for now how many years? How many years? Another one. In, in the country trade. How many countries have signed? How many? Another one, the passport. They collected our money for passports. They collected our photographs. Elijah might not have taken a photograph. I took my photograph. Maybe they took it to the French authorities to fix me in something. That money was taken. The court money was taken. The judges told me, frankly, Matanga, go out and shout. Shout for us, maybe. We sit here from first to 31st. No, 
Jack no cases. The African Union the chairman, Jefferson, has not put pressure, not lobbied the political and the security office, the judicial office, the legal team to land the mic so that Elijah can come in. Let me shock you. They went and recruited a man who has no degree in law from Burundi, a legal, uh, the head of the legal department of African Union has no degree, no law degree. Elijah, tell me, where are we heading? Is the, you have so many degrees, some of them you have kept them, you look, you lack even a box where to keep them. They should have recruited you to be the legal advisor, to advise them on, on all this. So, if this organization that comes out to single-handedly with his emotions, the chairperson Muhammad Faki uses emotions, his personal views, religious views, and says he condemns. He didn't condemn Hamas. He didn't condemn Hamas. He should have condemned Hamas and asked all the sides to rest it. He didn't do that. So, ladies and gentlemen, is this the African Union that we want? Some countries are not, are not interested. They don't want, there are people who don't want to go for conferences where Muhammad is accusing follow. My own country, the president is fed up completely with, with Muhammad Faki. Corruption. If I tell you the type of corruption, abuse, sexual abuse in, in inside the offices to get a job in at the suburb. Elijah, you need, if your daughter is going there, you better escort her. Because there are, there are hyenas and the feet who want to feast on, on her before they give her the job. Yeah, okay. I have done all this research, blended it over to the AIU chairman was in charge. I gave him the results. And then Mr. Muhammad Defak agreed there was corruption, and sexual abuse in the offices. He sacked the other aide de camp of his who was a French, French connection. That is the African Union you are telling me is not, it is divided. There is no unity here. Okay. Uh, uh, the, There's no unit. Okay. All right. Uh, well, certainly uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Dr. Matsanga. Thanks once more for, for that. Uh, we're looking at why is Africa divided with regards to support for Palestine. We have the honor to uh, welcome Mr. Elijah Nwoko. He's a researcher with Flix University. Uh, Mr. Elijah Nwoko, it's a pleasure having you on the program. Just before you came in, uh, Dr. Matsanga described uh, Hamas as a terrorist organization, and we are focused on what are the historical factors that have influenced Africa's divided support for Palestine in the uh, Israel-Gaza war. What's your description of uh, Hamas and what historical context do you want to highlight with regards to what we're having uh, presently since uh, uh, Hamas attacked uh, Israel? Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, thanks for having me one more time, uh, Luis. I think um, at the pan as an African, what interests me is the interest of Africa, first and foremost. That's what interests me. So any action anything that any organization country people do that endangers the prosperity of africa that stops the international community from looking at the issues that are happening in africa that diverts the attention of the whole world from the issues that are happening in africa is a disservice to the continent of africa so let's put it very clear because we are talking about africa and we believe that Africa should be our priority. So any action that takes place on the central stage that does not favor Africa is a disservice to Africa. So if you are an African out there and you are listening to us, the question you should be asking yourself and the question I should be asking myself is, how does Hamas terrorist attack on Israel favor Africa? Because right now, the whole, the 
attention of the whole world is taken away from the issues that are happening all over Africa and the rest of the world, the attention is now focused on Hamas and Israel war. The attention before now has been focused on Ukraine-Russia war. Now the attention is now focused on now Ukraine-Russia war and Hamas-Israeli war. So does that work well for Africa? I would say no. Even if you don't do not want to go to the historical perspective of this war, just from a geopolitical strategization and the influence that it has on the continent of Africa is negative for Africa. So what Hamas did, apart from being a terrorist attack from <clears throat> little children who had nothing to go to the war. So let's put this logically, Luis, and ladies and gentlemen out there. If Hamas, the things that they are fighting Israeli politicians and the army, if this had been an attack on Israeli military camp, then even from a moral perspective, somebody would say, yes, they have been fighting the Israeli military people, uh, government for a long time now. It's a resistance or it's for rights or, for, or whatnot. But you're talking about innocent civilians, little children, their school blown away. Children doing whatever they were doing, their school being taken away. Little children being killed just for existing or being Israelites. Is that justification? What kind of justification will you give? Whether you have sentiments for Palestine or you have sentiments for Israel, what justification can you give for blowing the heads of innocent children, having fun, little children, having fun, women and girls who had nothing to do with the war that's happening between Israel and Palestine or the resistance or the struggle that goes on between Israel and Palestine. That is why it doesn't matter your, your uh, political perspective or religious background. You should condemn this terrorist attack and say, this is wrong, this is bad, this is evil. Because sometimes I find this hypocrisy from our fellow friends in Africa who are in countries that are going through war, especially countries like you know, Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Cameroon, uh, Sudan, and so on. You are condemning terrorist attack in your country. You are condemning those who are cutting people's head and all whatnot. And then a similar situation that happened elsewhere. You now take either a religious tint to it. Instead of condemning it as an evil act on innocent people, you put a religious bent on it in order to support terrorism. It is wrong. Whatever, like my colleague was saying there, that Fakima did, it was wrong. It was not his position to speak, take religious sentiment and speak on behalf of African Union. This is a terrorist attack which he did not condemn. And that is what we find ourselves in Africa. If you look at the European Union, yes, I know that a lot of people who have these, you know, bad feelings against the Europeans because of imperialism and colonization, we all understand that. But from a logical perspective, Look at how they are united against terrorism. They spoke as one voice. They have one agenda. They go by their platform. They go by what they have all agreed to do. But you find a secretary general or chairman of uh, African Union using religious sentiments to send out a statement that did not tie in. That's why you find fragmentation in the African community. And King there coming very strongly condemning Hamas. You find Democratic Republic condemning Hamas. You find Zambia and these other countries. And then you find the Secretary General of their own organization saying Hamas is fighting for their rights. That is augmentation that we find within Africa. And until we come together, have a full flesh agenda of what we want, you will continue to find this fragmentation, uh, fragmentation within Africa. Because we do not have a common platform on how to speak. Even if we have, we are so fragmented because we have different interests in Africa. Some religious interests, some political interests, some, you know, that is the problem that we're having in Africa. And if you want to talk about the historic, uh, historical perspective, Luis, as you ask the question, this war, some people think that Israel started existing in 1948 when Israel was created. That is a limited version of it. The problem we are having in the Middle East today, if I want to give you the historical perspective, comes from the Khartoum Conference of 1967. When the Arab League gathered together and they came out with a resolution that says no peace with Israel, no negotiation with Israel, and Israel must not exist. The Hamas, which is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood that even Egypt itself had banned them, 
those are the options uh, 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 that went to Israel, uh, Hamas, I mean uh, Gaza, won the election, I think, 2006, if I remember the day very well, and defeated Fatah. The defeat of Fatah was the beginning of problems in the Middle East. Fatah was, no more, was not a radical movement the way Hamas is. Hamas does not believe the existence of Israel as a nation. That's the problem. When you don't believe that Israel should exist, this problem will not stop. So even from a conflict resolution strategy, you look at it and say, you look at an organization that does not believe that one other country, its neighbor should exist. Because if you look at many United Nations conferences and peace accords and all whatnot, they have been efforts to organize and stabilize a two-state solution. Israel living together with Palestine. But we've seen Hamas take this hard stand and said, Israel must not exist as a nation. Do not believe in Israel as a nation. That is the genesis of this problem. If they had believed, this peace process would have gone long a long way and there would have been peace in the Middle East. But we continue to say Israel must not exist as a nation. That is what we see happening in the Middle East today. Because if you look at even Egypt, I don't want to go into all the fighting that happened between Israel and its neighbors. But if you look at the fight that's going on in Egypt, I mean uh, in, uh, in Israel, even Egypt themselves, they're having a problem opening the Gaza Strip to refugee from the Gaza State. Why? Because they don't know who is coming in and who is going in. Egypt itself does not want Hamas. Jordan does not want Hamas. Syria does not want Hamas. The only people that are funding Hamas is Iran. That's funding Hamas. That tells you that this organization is not an organization that is seeking for peace. So for Africa to go and start taking sides without knowing the historical perspective of what we are talking about here, that is where we find ourselves in problems because we do not have a common platform. Yes, I do understand that countries like South Africa, right from the time of Yasser Arafat, they had banded together with uh, the uh, late Nelson Mandela because, you know, Mandela seems to have sympathy for them because he believed that the fight against apartheid was synonymous to the fight of the Palestinian against Israel. But that is different. Yasser Arafat stood for the two-state federation. He agreed on that. Hamas does not. Ladies and gentlemen, those who are listening, Hamas does not agree on the two-state solution of Palestine living together with you. Do not. All they agree all one is Israel must be wiped out from the face of the earth. And that is the propaganda that's coming from Iran. So for an African country, for Africa to start, you know, jumping into it without knowing what they're going to, you are actually, you know, agreeing or either disagreeing with terror. That's what it is. Because if you find why, you know, if some people will be questioning why Kenya had to come out so strong to con condemn Hamas. They are also dealing with Al Shabaab. You people who are dealing with terror, they feel the pinch. Exactly. So you're not going to dictate them and they should do this or do that. So again, the African Union need to get its act together and speak as one voice. Otherwise, this fragmentation is going to continue. And international, I mean, uh, different countries are going to exploit it. You know, Egypt, I mean, uh, Israel will come in, they want to exploit to their own advantage. The Arab world will come in, want to explore to their advantage, and Africa will continue to be fragmented. We should speak as one voice. The problem is that we do not have a common agenda, which we see. We don't have it. Even we have it, nobody respect it. You ask yourself the question, the communique that was sent about uh, Musa Fakima, who wrote that? Who wrote that communique? If they all wrote it, if they agreed on it, you won't find Kenya saying a different thing. Democratic Republic of Congo saying a different thing. Zambia saying a different thing. South Africa saying a different thing. They are so fragmented because they do have a common platform in the world. That is the problem in Africa, Louis. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Elijah Inoku. And we're looking at this, uh, the impact of this division and uh, how it's going to impact regional dynamics and African economies, uh, Dr. Matsanga. Uh, Mr. Elijah highlighted uh, the issues here, and let's focus now on how is this going to impact regional uh, dynamics and African economies, considering he equally highlighted the fragmentation of, of African nations? He just equally mentioned the fact that the statement by Mustafa Ki was not unanimously taken by uh, different African nations. Now, what's the impact of this division or this fragmentation? First of all, 
Yeah, well, the impact. We, we, there is my my colleague is very right. One hundred percent is exactly what my feelings are. We have no unity of purpose on the continent. This organization was created for unity of purpose, but we don't have it. We don't have it. The worst part of it is we said we elected this guy in 2017. This guy took off power in the African Union. From the time he took, he shifted everything, alliance. You cannot imagine. There are so many heinous crimes that have happened and Musafaki, including the killing of the president of Chad. And the following morning, this guy was, after two months, one month passed, the man went on TV, the same rebel who killed Dr. Geno Idris Dabi in cold blood. He didn't condemn the actions of the killers. He instead invited the killers to a peace process where they declared we killed him and no action has been taken. So if you come to the impact, what, I, what is the impact? There is a great impact, of course, of the selling oil prices, the cost of living, uh, which is already worsened by the situation of Ukraine, Russia war, that the impact will be great, will be very, very, very devastating. But that is not the problem here. The problem is where people are fragmented. They have been fragmented to a point that they don't stand on one common ground to say what they want. And the, the, the feelings of their Secretary General is religious. He has taken a religious belief that Hamas are good terrorists. A man from Kenya, from Uganda, whose people are dying in Somalia with Al Shabaab, would not say so, because we have feelings, which which my brother here has has, has, has quoted very well. Supporting Hamas is like supporting Al Shabaab in Somalia or Boko Haram in Nigeria which is killing people in the northern part of Madiguri and other areas, states, and the Bono states. That is it. That's, that, then let's now support Boko Haram. If you are supporting Hamas, that, uh, the whole Africa support al Shabaab. That's what the, 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 Dr. Muhammad Fakim is, is telling us to do. And he's continuing pouring, pouring his statements that are going to kill us economically, the impact. The impact is the damage. You are asking for what is the impact? Is our name is damaged. Our organization is damaged. Because from now onwards, the Arab states will act in Africa, will act on their own. From now onwards, the religious, other Christian religious countries will act on their own. From now onwards, South Africa is not even seeing eye to eye with some of us because we have criticized them. Even the South Africa's decision, they did not say, they said the Palestine. Which Palestine is fighting? Hamas is fighting, not Palestine. The, the Palestine in Ramallah is silent. Ramallah is different from Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip are terrorists who are fighting, who went and provoked the beehive. The beehive came for them. Let them stand to fight. Let them stand to fight the Israelis. They cannot play on international emotions, telling us to, to wipe and cry with them when they actually went and slaughtered children in Israel, and we forget that, then we come to AU. We say we don't know about that, but they, they, we, they need land. There are some people who are bargaining for land peacefully through negotiation. On table, Dr. Abbas, uh, Muhammad Abbas, is doing it on table. He's meeting people, Israelis, to say, Let's do this, let's do that, let's do this, let's do that. 
Let's not go here. Let's find, give us room. Time is going to come. The answer, which is the contentious issue in Jerusalem. Everybody will go there and pray. After all, what are prayers? Prayers does not mean the building. Prayers mean God. God can listen to you in a mosque. In a Christian, you can go to the mosque and God will listen to you. Why, why, why are we fighting over a, a building? Historical building, yes. But both of us can pray in there. The Muslims can walk in and pray. The Christians can walk in and pray. pray because we are all human beings governed by God. But Hamas doesn't listen. Hamas is not interested in any negotiations, as my friend has said. Let me, as I finish, look at the impact. New impact that is going to cause come on Africa is the sleeper cells of Hamas are going to act on countries that have supported Israel. Sleeper cells. They have friendly cells across the whole world. It's not only in Africa. Yesterday, listening to another television station, naming where Hamas have cells, have offices, it will come out that Hamas has got 300 offices in the United States of America. Funded, well funded there. They are grown there. And when you look at the people funding Hamas, it's not only Iran, Qatar. And here is Qatar, which is up, up front, taking, coming to Africa. We want to get involved in the peace process of Congo. They pay money to Dr. Muhammad Faki. Muhammad Faki has a case where he has taken money because he says he's the president of Africa. None of the African presidents can be better than him. That's what he told the foreign minister of Qatar. I have it on tape. I have it on tape. And I, I am telling you one of the things that made me, I, I, I had done something that made me and Elijah, we almost crossed. I, I, I now understand Elijah so well that he, at times he makes jo good jokes. <laughs> I should not take him very seriously by I'm sorry for what I, some of the statements I wrote back because I, I had worked so hard, including gathering intelligence reports that Musafak collected over three million dollars from the Iraqis in order to fix them in the Congolese uh, peace talks. So the foreign minister was saying, "Why do you blame us every day? You us us us? It is this my people. You know Arabs don't hide." It is this guy who comes here to collect our money. So there is a lot of evidence that can take if heads of state of Africa don't listen to us. Censor this man. Call this man. A censor motion, a ledger, is inevitable. Is, is, is there. Under 41 article rules of procedure, incompetence, read the AU charter. If the man has become incompetent by issuing a statement as a model, as a chairman of African Union Commission, the statement he issued is a statement of an ordinary Muslim cleric walking on the streets of Addis Ababa, not an officer who minds about all religious affiliations that are in the African Union. Therefore, the impact is very dangerous. Economically, it could put us in this array. Embargoes are going to fly around. Our, some of people will take literal attacks on countries like Kenya, Ghana, uh, Congo, and other states in Africa that supported the vulnerable to very serious consequences of the sister and those who live in Hamas worldwide. Those are things that we must watch out that could happen to us. Highlighting that, uh, Dr. David uh, Matsanga. Yes. Uh, now let's talk with you, Mr. Elijah. You had, you had earlier highlighted the, uh, talked about religious sentiment. And let's equally go back again to look at the role that religion plays in 
Africa's support on what is happening uh, between uh, Israel and uh, Gaza. And then, now, tell us a little, the role religion is playing here and uh, what possible outcomes should we expect? Dr. Matsenga highlighted something just at the end of his, uh, his statement. But now, tell us a little, what do you <coughs> think the role of religion here and the possible outcome? I'm very happy to ask that, that question, Lois, because somebody like me, I'm a Christian, a devout Christian for that matter. But as an intellectual, I am not going to let my religious sentiments cloud my sense of judgment. And if Africa is going to come out of the doldrums of this division that exists in Africa, we must keep aside our religious sentiments, call a spade a spade. Because one of the things that is going to happen, Luis, ladies and gentlemen listening to me, one of the things that is going to happen as an outcome and a result of this conflict in the Middle East, like my colleague Dr. Masanga already mentioned, is that you're going to find a re of Africa within religious lines. You're going to find Northern Africa and those Arab countries are either going to gang up and either, no, let me refrain from the word gang up, either going to team up themselves either start looking as if they are not part of the rest of Africa, which, to be honest with you, for those who are honest with themselves, that happened in different cases. Now, this is a further deepening of those lines, deepening of fragmentation within Africa along religious lines. This is the number one consequence. Number two, we know that the 10 or 10 most neglected conflicts in the world are in Africa. What is going to happen is that these conflicts are going to be neglected. They are going to be looked be beyond that. People are done. A couple of days ago, weeks ago on your TV, you guys are talking about the killings that are happening in Cameroon and people beheaded and all whatnot. Is the world talking about it? Nobody thinks that this, nobody even knows that what's happening in Cameroon. I mentioned somewhere about this on the internet, one of the social media forums that we discuss about international I mentioned Democratic Republic of Congo, Mali, Faso, Niger, and Cameroon, and things that are happening. Some people were like, is something happening in Cameroon? I'm talking about intellectuals who are into international relations and conflict resolution did not know that there's a war going on in Cameroon. That's to tell you that the more these issues are happening, the more the problems in Africa are being neglected. And the more fragmentation happens within the African Union, the more we are not moving ahead, the more people are going to see themselves along religious lines than seeing themselves as Africans. Because we have a common problem, whether you're coming from the north or the south, the problem is the same. Even Egypt, I will speak today, Egypt is going through one of the worst economic crises where the value of their currency has been valued. Whether you're talking about Algeria, you're talking about Morocco, you're talking about Senegal, it doesn't matter that they are religious, I mean, uh, uh, Muslims in Africa. We do not look at them as Muslims. We look at them as Africans. The same problem that we feel in sub-Saharan Africa is the same problem that is being felt in Egypt. So these issues will comment Africa along religious lines. Number three, let us understand that in Africa, we have the issues of Boko Haram. We have issue of uh, Al-Shabaab. We have issues of all these other uh, ISIS is also in Africa. If we start giving using religious sentiments in order to evaluate some of these things, we are giving them an invitation to say, oh, these countries are now aligned with Hamas. These countries are now aligned with these organizations. Therefore, we can win sentiment. They are going to go into those countries and do massive recruitment of militants. I'm telling you this. Boko Haram is going to recruit, Ashaba is going to recruit, ISIS is going to rec uh, recruit within the population of Africa because they see that the sentiments in the Middle East are not being looked at from a pure logical perspective. They are being looked at through religious sentiments. And therefore, Africa is going to go into deep, deep trouble because of this. Fourthly, from a geopolitical perspective, we found that Israel has been I mean, coming closer to Africa not in terms of religious sentiments. Let's understand this. I'm not talking about Israel coming in, trying to institute Judaism or Christianity. Israel has been coming in, trying to create alliances with a lot of countries in Africa, because when it comes to agriculture, Israel is one of the best in the world. 
they have been trying to create alliances. What is going to happen is some of these countries that have stood against and said, no discussion, oh, Hamas, they were fighting for their rights and so on. Do you believe a country with Israel, like Israel, that has been coming to, you know, trying to come closer to Africa with that technology, is going to go in to have this kind of agreement with countries that are openly siding with Hamas? Of course not. Of course not. So Africa needs to know its priorities. We need to understand what are our priorities. Who can we work with? Instead of using religious sentiments and say, oh, Hamas, this, that, terror is terror. Evil is evil. We must say this is wrong. Yes, we don't want people to be dying in Palestine. No one. No one will want people to be suffering in Palestine. But the palace of Yasser Arafat is not a Palestine of uh, Hamas. People need to understand this and make a demarcation. Yasser Arafat was a two words for a two state federation in, in Palestine. The southern borders, the southern people, is not being controlled by Hamas. Those are not terrorists. Those people, you can go into negotiations with them. But if you are talking about Hamas and you're taking side with Hamas, you are taking side with terror. And nobody, it doesn't matter, the United States, I know a lot of people are going to dismiss and say, we don't care about the United States. We don't care about European Union. But the same people that we don't care about are the same people we are signing to contract and doing all these things with them. Nobody is going to work with a country that is openly siding with terror. Nobody wants terror. So Africa must understand what our priorities are, leave aside religious sentiments, call a spade a spade, and understand where we are going. Otherwise, the consequences are going to be dire on the continent of Africa. And I hope we don't go that route. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Elijah Nwoku. And quickly, let's talk with you, Dr. Matsanga. We've highlighted the consequences and possibly the impact. And now we're looking at what uh, can African countries do to find a lasting solution to this problem? Because we already understand uh, how the consequences will be on the African continent. How can, at this point, African countries you know, work together in finding a lasting solution. We already understand the division that exists between uh, the Afghan states in supporting <coughs> Palestine and Israel with regards to um, economic interests and all the rest. How can we work together to, you know, find a solution to the problem? The problem of, 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 of Hamas and Israel or the problem of African Union? I can't hear you. Uh, Africa, you know, has its own uh, issues with regards to the leadership, considering the recent statement made, which is not in accordance with uh, the uh, statement or position of different African states. But now we're finding out what can be done in order to find a lasting solution to the problem. What can African nations do? Just to suck the Jason. Just remove him. <laughs> That's <laughs> what are you looking for? Sack him. Tell President Paul Obia, every president in Africa, I have sent a letter with grounds, 14 grounds, under Article 41, 14 good grounds to remove, to censor for the whole <coughs> African heads of state to sit in their next summit. And ask their dear person, close the doors in camera and ask him, ground number one, is this true or not true? Ground number two, is it true or not true? Ground number four, are, 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 are the judges in African court, have you ever written to us letters asking us to rectify, to rectify? The African Court of Shum, Court of People and the Human Rights. No. Ground number four, the Marabo and the Maputo Declaration, Abuja Declaration. Ground number six, seven, eight, seven of them, the killing of Idris. Did you condemn Chad rebels? Yes or no? Where is the statement? Zero. Did you get permission to go to Doha to meet the rebels who had killed who themselves? Elijah, these guys came and said, we found him and killed him. Nobody came 
Even the vice president was not given a chance in Chad to take over power because Macron and AU chairperson, AU C chairperson, arrived in arrived in Jamena, installed the son of the president. A coup, a silent a coup, you kill the father, put in the son, let things go on. The vice president who had one, who had a running mate was not even considered for anything. We have a problem. Sudan is burning now as we talk. The man has never issued such a statement condemning the atrocities that are taking place in Sudan between the two generals. The man works with General Khalifa Haftar, who has 30,000 troops in South Libya. 30,000 troops. They pick money from the European Union, claiming that they stop immigrants from Africa from crossing through that route. You know there is a route that passes Cameroon, a very huge route where ivory, ivory goods were being, you know, taken up to Sahara Desert. This is the route where African immigrants from West Africa follow through all that Chad, part of Niger, and enter Libya. There's a big route there. And then this, the worst part is the European Union pays warlords, terrorists, to guard this route with the permission of African Union heads of state. They have never sanctioned. These things are happening. It's not. If your president is listening, he is going to tell his foreign minister to ask what is going on there. The gentleman, look. Everything is gone wrong. So the only thing to do is ask Mr. Muhammad Faki not to end his office. He goes home. We get a new neutral. I don't care if a man, a what, as long as it's not Muhammad Faki, a person who does not use religious feelings to write against Israel. Look at what he did. He went to Tel Aviv. Who sanctioned him to go to Tel Aviv? Himself. He traveled to Tel Aviv, met the Prime Minister of Israel, met the Prime Minister of Israel, promised them a place of observer status in the, Europe, in the African Union. Elijah, I am telling you, the envoy, we are very happy. He took their money. The Israelis have told me even how much it, it was given. They are ready to tell it out. They have, and I'm going to tell it out to the heads of state. After taking their money, the Israelis arrived in Addis Ababa to, he invited them, he gave them an invitation. Then when South Africa said, we are splitting this organization, Dr. Muhammad Faki sat in the conference. I swear, he looked as if he didn't talk those Israelis at all. He had to be taken like a dog. So, what type of <coughs> secretariat is this with a mess of this nature? What type of secretariat is this that has not accomplished all the protocols, all the 30 are 25 protocols of African Union. If you can find one that has been fully fledged, done, Elijah, come to me, I'll buy you a soda. Come. There is no protocol that has been fully signed and endorsed as successful. All right. They said they will finish the guns by 2020. The guns have increased after 2020. They said they will introduce an African passport by 2020. The year has passed, we are in 2023. Not even a single passport was given to any common African, except presidents, few of them who have 
passport as souvenir mm. because it can't work anyway. It's not in the systems. Okay. Millions and millions of dollars were wasted mm. on contracting the passport. So the only solution is to sack Mr. Muhammad Faki, to or even not sacking him, but to follow him by the laws. If he has committed corruption, we must find a way of putting him in jail. But if since it is difficult to find him in all 55 jail, uh, prisons, we want to demoralize him, never to get anywhere in the world again for any job. Okay. Because he's collecting money to go back to stand as the president of Chad in the next coming elections. That's what they have connived with the French so that he becomes the president of Africa. Mm. That would be very good for us to issue warrants of arrest when he becomes the president of Africa. We shall wait for him. When he arrives in a country like my country, Uganda, we arrest him for the money he stole in the AU. That's it. Okay. This guy is a rapist. He's, he's a rapist. He's everything. He's everything. His son even raped Edris, Edris's daughter. I've not told you all these things. There are so many bad things that that guy has done to African Union. Mm. And therefore, for our image to be returned, for our image for presidents of Africa, well educated with PhDs, so many of us, we must rescue our organization from this maniac who has become a very, very dangerous surrogate of policies of the Gulf states. He's bringing us the politics of fanatism on our continent. And our continent is going to be engulfed in fanatic politics of rule of people who take religion as the only subject they eat, they drink, they die with. All of us are religious, but we are not to that level. That you go and maim people in the name of Jesus Christ. Or you go and maim people in the name of your religion. I'm not saying all Muslims are bad. A few elements like Hamas are dangerous. Therefore, I have no mercy. Mm. If okay. Israel goes on that's what it is doing. Let them find them. Find them. Find them. All right. Uh, they threw the stone to the beehive. Mm. They threw the wait, let me finish my point. They threw the stone to the beehive. Mm. The bees have come. Stand and fight them. <laughs> okay. I don't want to hide. All I don't right. want to hide. I have no respect for Hamas. Because it is, it is a terrorist organization. Mm. Why, why do we waste time even talking about oh, Palestine? If, if Israel had attacked Ramana, I want to tell you this and let people listen to me. If Israel had attacked um, Ramana, I would protest against Israel. Mm -hmm. Elijah get me very clear. I would mm -hmm. protest. Because Ramana, according to the standards of negotiation dialogue, is already a state. It must be respected. But Israel is fighting a terrorist group called Hamas that came and killed over 900 people, abducted very many, taking them as hostages. Let Israel find their people and return them home. Even if it means flattening the Gaza Strip, let it be. All right. As long as they keep international, as long as they keep international law, okay. They should not. You see, I am a security yeah. expert. Let me bring in this one as as okay. Elijah comes. Yeah. What Hamas has done, if it if it is a bomb coming from the top, we could have seen a crater. A crater. Yes. I'm a military man, and don't tell me I don't know. How a bomb from top or a missile from top lands on a building. The whole building would have taken out. Then there would be a crater. But these guys looked at a Christian, a Christian hospital. 
a Christian hospital. That's the type of hatred that they have. Mm. The hospital that was bombed down is a Christian hospital. Okay. Now tell me, why is Israel not bombing the other hospitals? Mm. Okay. There you are. I leave it to Elijah. All right. Uh... Mr. Elijah, we end in with you, and uh, we still want to find out from you as well. Just the same question we asked uh, Dr. Matsanga. What do you think African states can do? We understand the division that exists uh, among African states with regards to their support for uh, what is happening uh, between uh, Israel and Gaza. What do you think can be done, and what role, and how can African states unite to possibly find a lasting solution to what is happening? Because you already highlighted the consequences and <laughs> it's important that uh, a way out or solution should be uh, arrived at. So what do you think can be done? The first thing I want to say is this, Loris. I want to use a simple example. If you have a problem, if a man and his wife is having a problem, your neighbor, they're having a problem, the husband and the wife are having a problem. You have your own issues with your children and your own wife. Instead of solving the problems in your house, you're more interested in solving your neighbor's problem. Who's a foolish man? I mean, this is common sense. We have tons of tons of problems in Africa. That's not to say we are preaching the, the, the principle of isolation, that Africa should be isolated. No, but Africa should prioritize African problems. If you go on social media, on TV, every, everybody's about Palestine, Israel, Palestine, Israel, this, like it was about Russia and Ukraine. As I mentioned to you, it will be shocking to you to know that within the international community where some of us belong and we live and we talk and we go for conferences, people do not know the problems that are happening in Africa. You and I, we've talked on this show about the most neglected conflict, I think the most 20, 20 or even 10, I can't remember the number. They are all in Africa. Why? Because Africa does not prioritize its own problems. We want to talk about Israel and Palestine. We want to talk about Russia, Ukraine. We want to talk about uh, whatever is happening elsewhere, except what's happening in Africa. We don't want to talk about it. So that is the number one consequence, as I already said, the neglect of the conflicts and the problems we have in Africa. What is the solution? My colleague has already mentioned a couple of things that we should fire Mac Faki, Makisa, uh, Musa, Makima, and all these other people. I agree with him. But we should go deeper than that. Africa should have a common platform on which to speak, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to speak about the things that are happening in the world, but we are not going to speak with divergent voices. The policy of divide and rule is still alive and well in Africa. The Western world will come in, inject religion here. The Northern African state will be talking about as if they don't belong to Africa. They are Islamic states or they are Arab states, or whatever it is. But when it comes to issues of Africa, they want money from African Development Bank. They want money from this. They want money from this. Recently, you know, the northern states, that's Egypt, Tunisia, and the rest, they recently signed a contract with African Development Bank for huge sums of money to be funded by the European Union, but all in the name of Africa. They didn't do it as Arab leagues or states in the Arab League. They did it as African states. So if we are Africans, we should leave aside religious sentiment. So number two, in the preamble of African Union, religion should be taken away from there. Nobody should act or do anything in the name of religion. Yes, we are all Christians and Muslims. We go to mosques, we go to our churches, we do our things. That should not be a source of division among Africans. Religion should not come to divide us. We should all take our religion from our preamble and make sure that we are speaking as Africans. Number three, despite colonization, I know that a lot of my colleagues within the international community, every conference where I go and mention this, they frown at me, but this is a fact and it's going to remain a fact. Despite colonization, despite slavery, despite all the things that were happening to Africa, Africa is still going to work with the Western world. Africa is still going to work with the European Union. Africa is still going to work with the United States. Africa is still going to work with uh, uh, Russia. Africa is still going to work with China. Africa is still going to work with EU. Even France, that has become the enemy number one in most African countries now, we are still going to work with France. So what am I saying? Diplomacy 101. 
Nobody has come, uh, permanent enemies. We only have permanent interest. What are the interests of Africa? What is the interest we are trying to pro protect? We need to understand what our interest is. And in every decision that we take as an Africans or African Union, those interests should come first. Is religion our interest? That's a question people should ask themselves. People are dying of hunger. People are dying of this. People are dying of illiteracy. People are dying of many things in Africa. We should understand our priorities. And every time we ask an, as, an, uh, as an African, or we go in as AU, those priorities should be our forefront, should be at the forefront. That is why before Musa Fakima wanted to make that statement, did he understand what the priorities of Africa were? He took religious sentiments, went ahead and made declaration, and then had fragmentation that's happening within Africa now. Algeria is saying something else. Uh, Egypt is neutral. This one is doing this. Uganda is doing this. I mean, this, these are things that Africa need to come together and make sure that they are on the preamble. Like my colleague already said, even what's on the preamble right now is not even being respected. If somebody needs to take Africa ahead, we must make sure that if we have a preamble, we have laws and regulations that govern the African Union, those must be respected. And anybody that goes against it, whether you call yourself Fakista Musa or whoever you are, it must be sanctioned. People should not trample upon the law and go scot free. Otherwise, we are building a society of anarchy. So, again, to end, Africa must know its priorities, its interests, and protect those interests first. Because if you do anything that goes against your interests, at the end of the day, you're going to get punished by the other com by the internet community that you're dealing with. I will give an example. Now, I said before that Israel has been trying to come into, into Africa uh, to build a lot of relationship from the agricultural perspective. And a lot of African countries, including Morocco, that's an Arab country, has been going into a lot of negotiation with Israel. Now, if the African Union now start going against those interests and they say Hamas were fighting for their rights, do you believe that Israel is going to continue to come closer to Africa to share that technology in terms of agricultural technology with Africa? No. So that's what I'm saying. If you have a problem in your house, you do not have a problem and you're looking at the neighbors that's having a problem, you want to go and solve that problem first, you're a foolish man. That's what Africa, Africa is trying to do. Let us make sure that we harness our efforts and our goals and our priorities towards our interests in Africa. Then we can talk about Middle East and all because all our pronouncement, our declaration, our support must tie in with our interests. Anything that goes against our interests, we're not going to support it. So that is what I want to end by saying, fellow Africans, let us not use sentiments, whether religious sentiments or maybe some of the feelings that we had against people that colonize us. Let us not use that because I see that even with the African diaspora as well. They say, oh, the Western, we, you know, uh, the Western world colonized us. Therefore, anything that they support, we cannot support. That is not logical. That is not logical thinking. We are still going to deal with these people. If it is evil, let us condemn evil. If it is right, let's go what's right and go to the table with equity. They say he who comes to the table must come with clean hands. You can't support terrorism in one area and then you're trying to condemn it in your own country. University, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thanks for being part of the program this afternoon. We equally had uh, uh, participating Dr. David Matsanga, uh, political scientist and international relations expert. You were discussing the topic Israel Gaza war and why is Africa divided on supporting Palestine and the implications of the war. And that's, of course, what we were discussing today. On the program views in the continent, I want to thank you so very much those of you who took our time to watch the program uh, back at home or following us uh, via Facebook. We appreciate you for being there. We invite you to stay with us. Uh, more programs are right ahead. Tomorrow is another day. We keep an eye on the developments in the, um, around the world and how it affects Africa. We shall always come back here to discuss uh, Africa first, just like uh, our guest uh, discourse, Africa first. And of course, we need to focus more on Af solving Africa's problem. We appreciate you for being there on the program. Thanks to our technicians. Until then, tomorrow is another day. Bye-bye for now. Stay tuned for more programs right ahead.
Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous.